before his wife comes in and takes the baby, he's sitting here with a cute little baby in his lap. And the baby's name is Wolf. I quite like that name, actually, as, as a kid. That's quite a cute name. The baby's name is Wolf. He's got his baby son in his lap, chilling, talking on the pod, living the life. This is a dream, right? You'd imagine. You're making money, you're supporting your family, and you get a chance to hang out with your kids at the same time. You don't have to go anywhere. You're chilling. You're living the fucking dream. You brought a new, you know, you brought a life into the world. It's amazing, cool, amazing blessing. He goes from this into just like <laughs> coping and seething about an innocent Mr. Potato Head joke. It's truly incredible. Just because. You know, it's gonna be like a, it's gonna be a whole thing. Uh, <laughs> that chuckle, the coke like chuckle. This guy, um, so funny. There's there there. This guy made this like hater video about me, right? So funny. Uh, I don't know what his name. Hater is. video. Name? His name is um, too lazy to try YouTube. That's his YouTube. I I, I actually put a post of it on my uh, thing. You know what's crazy is this guy made a hater video about me and <laughs> I, I, I he gets more views than my podcast and it's about me. I almost feel like I need to start doing hater videos about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I You see, he mentioned that already. That's the first thing that pissed him off. He saw the criticism, he saw the views, he created views with money, and he immediately got pissed off immediately got pissed off <laughs> just like rebrand the podcast just hating on air hate a video who is this guy also that video only exists because he shared that dumb story keep that in mind that two is to try video and my video don't exist if he doesn't say what he says but we digress uh you know what i mean it, it, it and it's like now like the, the video has a hundred and ninety three thousand views of it now i'm like god damn do people dislike people like disliking me? You know what I mean? Two, maybe, 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 but mostly it's a dumb story. It's a funny story, and a lot of people get a lot of humor out of dunking and laughing at comedians who take themselves way too seriously. You included. Big up Omar Ramos. Big up pause. Big up Omar show. Ramos. Wagwan Omar Ramos. Big up, big up, big up, big up. Um. Yeah, so so anyways, I was on the Legion of Skanks, man. I don't know if you guys know that podcast. And then and... The Legion of Skanks, not a Legion of Skanks, the Legion of Skanks. And that fan base is just like that's a toxic there's there's toxic uh fringe that watch that fan base. That's just It's not a bit of a cunny thing to say. You get invited as a guest on the show and then you call their fan base toxic. Isn't that kind of a cunty thing to say? They invite you as a guest on their show. They share their platform with you. They share their viewers with you. And then you're calling them toxic. Are they toxic or are you just a bad guest? Are they toxic or they just or they just hate you being on the show? Because you're shit. It's, you know, that's, but they're all like that. There's bad friends, people who are like that, that just hit me up with negativity. There's like, you know what I mean? There's a fringe, I guess, of every podcast. And it's indicative of what happens online. So these people are just like inundating my message box and all this stuff. So I, uh, <laughs> just ignore it. The inundated your message boss. Just ignore it. But he's the kind of person that thinks like he can reason with trolls. He can reason with haters. I'm going to tell them about themselves. I'm going to say to him, hey man, would your kid be proud of you? He's got, like, he does all that back and forth shit. He thinks he's like, <sighs> If you're this sensitive and thin-skinned, surely just ignore some of the stuff people say about you. That might be the best way to kind of deal with it. Oh, I went into the... I thought it was funny, so I went into the comments. You know what I mean? That's the first mistake you made. You can never win. It's the internet. Everybody thinks you're a bitch. Everyone thinks you're thin-skinned. This is the narrative. Just move on. You can never beat the internet. Either you ignore it or you don't. But if you don't ignore it, they're going to keep saying stuff about you. You know, because <laughs> I just think it's like the guy made a whole video. So anyways, so I'm on Legion of Skanks and I tell this story about, and I've told this story before on other things, whatever. It's like, so I got into this lift a, long, you know, a while, a few years ago, I got into this lift. And this is the thing I didn't say about the story because we were, I was just trying to be funny in the moment with the Skanks because we were talking about Uber and all this stuff. But I got into this uh, uh 
And then, uh, by the way, Robert Kelly was telling you, like, he has a high rating because he talks to... By the way, at this point, at this point, I swear to God, at this point, when he starts talking now, I honestly thought he was going to clear up the story and make it sound a lot better. Maybe he was going to say, oh, actually, I exaggerated. I wasn't actually live tweeting to get them fired. I was trying to make it a bit. Like, I thought that was what he was going to do. But listen to how he tries to justify and explain and reason as to why what he did was okay. Trying to get Lyft driver fired because they made a throwaway joke that he didn't like. Listen to how he tries to explain it. To people and he's nice to them and, it, you know, it was the whole interaction, right? So anyways, I get into this Lyft. Now, I'll never forget this. And it's not because she made a joke because I don't really care. Bobby Lee is the one that called me Mr. Potato Head. Rick Glassman took it further and got me this cup. This, <laughs> you know what I mean? This Mr. Potato Head cup. Like I, I, I don't like. Like, listen, it. I don't care, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> really? I couldn't tell. Call me whatever. All right. So, the point is, all right. So, that was a thing that was in my head. You know, I knew about that. So, anyways, I get into this lift. You know, and the lady was like weird, like autistic type weird. Already, you thought he was going to make it better, but he's making it worse. Now he's saying she's autistic. Now he's judging. Now he's labeling. Now he's being almost, is it ableist? That's the word, right? Now this woman that made a joke that he didn't like is autistic. <laughs> oh, God, Eric. Not that being autistic is weird. I'm just giving you an example of what, you know. Like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure, like, sure, 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 sure. Sure. I don't even sure. know if that's what it was. I'm sure. saying it was autistic like. Oh yeah, yeah. It was that makes so it so better. Bizarre. So you're Mr. Potato like. That makes it better, right? You're built like a sack of potatoes like. That makes it better. Just adding the like on it makes it better, right? The internet isn't real life. Aaron Steele to him hold. Pre wildly public divorce. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The people who try to act the most unbothered are always the most bothered. Always the most bothered. Why wouldn't it bother you? Why are you pretending? Oh, big up MJ Ranger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a day. It's a real life. Fast forward, very public divorce in which you got cucked by a fucking cokehead. You have to be embarrassed. But yeah, big up NJ Ranger. <laughs> like, the way she said it, she said it was, I, 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 this is what I'm saying. I didn't express it when I was telling this story, but I'm telling you now because we can get more in depth and, and, and into it. It's like, the girl was like contemplating, you know? And she was, oh my God, look how sinister. So she was an autistic, conniving, sinister, contemplating, premeditating, horrible, insulting joke person that happened to be a Lyft driver. Okay. Being like real, like standoffish. Standoffish. And then she's autistic, says, yeah, menacing. You know, you look like Mr. Potato Head. Ouch. <laughs> I can laugh about it now. That laugh, that laugh is not a laugh. That's a, that's, he's angry. That's not a laugh. That's a cope. He's seething. People like this are usually the most dangerous because when they snap, everybody dies. <laughs> he's that meme. He's that meme of the, of the person fucking laughing with the face, but then crying behind it. Cause think about it. When an, when an NPC loses it, everybody fucking dies. Because they've been trying for a long time to act like, I'm everything's fine. I have a wife and a baby and a career that I love and friends and colleagues. Everything is fine. I love my life. I'm happy just the way I am. I'm happy exactly where I am with the career that I have. I love it. My wife is lovely. I wouldn't change anything about my life. And then deep down, they're like, I should be on Netflix. I should be on HBO. Fuck Brendan. Has he have this show? He has a Porsche and a Lambo and a Latina. I have this fucking girl that works as a VM at Target. And she keeps nagging at me. This baby is fucking dumb. This job is dumb. Why doesn't Rogan invite me to fucking Austin? Why does he buy me a house? Why don't I have a Lambo? Then when he snaps, everybody's mum is crying. 
Everybody's mum's got a fucking airbrush t-shirt. Go from me everywhere. Doves getting released into the sky. Everybody's dying. R.I. Peepo's everywhere. He's taking everybody out. Because that rage is there. But he's trying to keep a good face on it. <laughs> I was like, it wasn't even like, if she was making a joke, like let's say she's a fan of Tiger Belly or she's a fan of whatever. Or if the lady was trying to be funny. You know when somebody's trying to be funny? You know, they're saying like, hey man, you know, this was like, by the way, as a last thing about this, surely as a comedian, you have to be okay and put up with people trying to be funny. That should be like an unfortunate side of the job. You say you're a comedian. Oh, tell me a joke. You say you're a comedian. Oh, do you know Ricky, I don't know, Ricky Gervais? There has to be certain things that you are aware of and you can anticipate when you mention you're a comedian. And maybe you safeguard around it and you just stop mentioning you're a comedian. You're like, oh, what do you do? Uh... You know, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Import, export. I work in public relations. I don't know. You make up a thing just to avoid the unless the awkward, annoying questions at the end. But you should be used to it now. It shouldn't annoy you to this level. You've probably heard it a million times. Why does it bother you like this? That's the thing that's really bugging me out. It's like, it's, this is a throwaway interaction. We've all got into a million Ubers, a million cabs. We probably can't remember a conversation if you tried right now. But you remember them in the moment. But they just disappear afterwards because they don't matter. Your life just continues. But this guy is like holding on to this shit. And it really, it's like, how many people have called you Mr. Potato Head over the entirety of your career? Why are you this bothered? Why? Like, serious. Like, it was, it just threw me for a loop. I didn't appreciate it. It wasn't even about it being a joke. <laughs> I didn't appreciate it. It hurt my feelings. It just was like the way she said it. So I. Yeah. How did she say it? You look like Mr. Potato Head. Or she say, hey, nigga. I don't even know if you're a nigga. You look like Mr. Potato Head. Uh-huh. Or what did she say? How did she say it? How could she have said it that would hurt your feelings? How? You know, I remember I went on Twitter while she was talking. She was just saying stuff. I wasn't even listening. I was just like, hey, uh, I got into your Uber. And then anyway, the... Um... Also, if you're going to snitch, at least be a man about it and say, bitch, shut the fuck up. Who are you calling fucking Mr. Potato Head? I pay your fucking wages. You know what? Fuck that. You're getting fired. I'm going to I'm gonna tweet them right now. At least be a man and own up to it. Don't just sit there and be like, <laughs> and then like be fucking, you know, like a little whatever you know the word i want to say behind the seat like underneath so she doesn't see the screen at least say you're gonna do it you know lift tweets back at me and you know right so anyways i tell this story well man now lift tweets back at me i'll give them my customer id number i'll give them my date of birth and my zip code i told them the first line of my address and i file an official complaint but i haven't heard from them just yet Ugh. yuck turns into a whole thing so this guy makes a video about me, about doing this. And then he goes deep into my podcast, like 2018. I love how he's using that as an insult. Bro, you, you said, these, these guys are so bad. Consume my podcast, use my discount code, buy my merch, buy tickets to my show, watch my special so I can get good view numbers, so I can renegotiate and get more money for my next special. But don't, under any circumstances, call me out on the things I've said on my own recorded show. Because those shows, they live in a silo. They live in the moment. When I drop them, that's when I drop them. But you can't refer to them when I drop another one. Yo, you said it on your own show. Tunes to try, just went on your fucking, it's easy to do. He probably went on fucking podcast transcripts site, searched Lyft and found the reference of it. Or maybe searched on Google, saw it, clipped it but you said it with your own words and now you're trying to use it against him oh he's being parasocial he's looking too deep he's being a so you said it you fucking said it and finds a video about me talking about something complete like this is a two different scenarios the the thing i was talking about in 2018 was about you know somebody not getting the bags so he thinks this is better by the way he thinks this is better he thinks that because the stories are different it makes him look better. But what it actually proves is that you're a bitch. You were complaining about a woman not picking up your bags 
And then you complained when a woman bullied you and called you Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Those, that doesn't make you look better. I don't, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> when it was like, that's what they're there for. You know? But anyways, so he grabbed that and like put them together. And then, of course, the idiots online make, made it out to be one thing. Like it was all the same thing. And it wasn't, you know. The idiots online. <laughs> I don't care, by the way. I don't care. I don't care. Idiots online. <laughs> so you know, you go on this uh, um, thing and I see it and I start, you know, commenting myself because, like, again, I think it's. Of course, anyone that doesn't care jumps into the comments and starts commenting. Great strategy. Great strategy, Eric. I even posted it on my on my channel. I mean, Great. I'm sure Twitch to try needs a promotion. I'm sure Twitch to try needs your marketing help. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he was chuffed to see you post his clip on your page. I'm sure. I'm sure posted my thing you know because i thought it was like okay this is kind of interesting somebody went through all this trouble but you know i don't begrudge the guy this is how the guy makes money you know what i mean like this is literally what he does it's like that other guy you know <laughs> who's always watching <laughs> he's talking about red bar look at him the dread he's talking about red bar he's so scared honestly these comedians are so dumb i get it red bar can be annoying i get it red bar can be possess red bar could be methodical I get it. Red bar is red bar. But it's just the guy saying his opinion on the things that you say. It's not that deep. And these guys are scared. The guy doesn't leave his studio. And they're legitimately scared of this guy. Because what? Because he says mean stuff about you on a podcast. That's behind the paywall. Why does it matter? <sighs> Big up red bar. <laughs> you know, it's like, if that's what you do, that's what you do. If this is how you make money, make money. What <laughs> you make money complaining about Lyft drivers? Other people make money taking the piss out of you complaining about Lyft drivers. I think we're all in the same position here. No one's better than the other, to be honest. If anything, you're probably a bit lower than us because you have a career as a professional comedian. You work in fucking Hollywood. Why are you bothering? Why do you care about some random YouTube channel had to say about a story that happened age like if you don't care, why do you why are you speaking about it? Simple as that. Hey, how he's doing it is better than what I'm doing, right? So then he like, you know, of course it's like you have to say all kinds of hater stuff about me. The, you know what the thing the thing that I hater resent in the video me. more than anything else hater is when he says Oh, he's just a podcaster. That's all he's doing now. That's the part that got me. <laughs> Like everything else they said, I don't care. Have fun at it. But you think that's all I'm doing is like, but that, I mean, you know, that's for the video. But I mean, I just, I just did a movie that was in Tribeca. I've done, I just did another movie where, with, with Al Pacino and Vince Vaughn are starring in the movie. It's a little part, very little. I got one scene, but I'm in the movie, you know. I did George Lopez last year. I just sent it, I just did, I'm also directing. I've directed four comedy specials. One of them is the most watched special of last year. Uh, I just directed another one and I directed this other, you know, I, I just joined a director's guild. Um, you know what I mean? Like to think that like, just cause you, just cause the podcast world, y'all don't watch movies or like care about anything else, but being negative, those, those, those negative people, like, come on now, don't just. I'm not gonna lie, um, big up, uh, I don't know why it didn't show up. Big up Valdez family. I think maybe it's there's a word here that's banned. Maybe Red Bar's banned. Maybe Red Bar's flagged somehow. Maybe Red Bar's flagged. It didn't come up. I don't know why the teachers didn't sound it. That's hilarious. Maybe YouTube has automatically flagged Red Bar's name. <laughs> that's so funny. Big up Valdez family. Red Bar is a comedian. Is a comedian boogeyman. He must be. Streamlabs has automatically flagged his name. So what is it? Oh, there we go. Now it comes up. Okay, now it comes up. I was about to say. Red bars the comedian oh, okay. man. There we go. There we go. Big up Bowder's family. Appreciate. Appreciate you. I'm. I'm in no position to offer anybody advice or anything. But I think if you're Eric Griffin, if you are being described as just a podcaster, and people aren't looking at your other achievements and aren't congratulating you for the other things that you're doing, which you mentioned, producing, directing, acting, maybe think about how you present yourself online. Maybe do a Theo Vaughn and back away from Brendan. Maybe start promoting and pushing out the things that you do that don't just involve you sitting in front of a short microphone. Maybe show other sides of yourself that don't involve you complaining about haters and act like you don't care. Maybe do that. And then people will notice, oh shit, this guy does other shit apart from just talking about stuff on pods. 
He actually produces. He actually writes. He actually directs. He actually acts. Maybe present that more. But no, you don't, do you? Because that shit pays well. So you do the easy thing. You sit down with donuts and diddlers. Then you get... Because that's what's happened to him, basically. Because he's sitting down with Brendan and because he's sitting there with Dalia, he's now got that their stink on him a little bit. Because, again, I've never been the biggest Eric Griffin fan. I, I've, there's something about bitchy, moany, crybaby men that fundamentally at my core just i can't stand it's not to do with him personally it's just guys who act like this who bitch and complain and moan and are entitled and are complainy and just whiny and babyish and just look at the face he's got there that face that he has there i'm sure you've all had mates and people that you've known in your life guys who have this type of face this constantly just like everything's always just like it's too cold it's too warm i'm hungry why did i love it to drink like it's always just like something was like people like this i just i just dislike anyway but i think regular people don't even know nothing about eric griffin but because he sits next to brendan and chris he's get some of their stink so if he's annoyed at how he's being perceived maybe stop hanging around with brendan and chris maybe forego that check and do your own thing and push out your own thing and people will maybe start taking you a little bit more seriously because clearly in comedy he's good he's good enough to get a residency at fucking the the mothership even though him and rogan don't appear to be the closest rogan still rates him enough as a comedian to be like hey come and do the comedy mothership have residency do you know what I mean he's clearly funny people in my stream chat always say they've seen him do stand up and he's actually quite good he's clearly a good actor because he keeps getting roles he's clearly good at producing and directing because he keeps getting gigs Maybe focus on that shit and stop sitting next to Chris and, Brian and Chris and Brendan and people won't think you're a piece of shit because they're pieces of shit. It's on, that's what it is. The company you keep is the company you keep, my guy. You know? And then it's like, you know, you see some of the comments. Oh, this is, you know what? How I read comments, we should read these comments. That's actually funny. You know what I mean? Like we should read the comments <laughs> from this video. That's the comments that we should read, right? That would actually be, would that, would that be kind of funny? That's a bad idea. That's a really bad idea. A really bad idea. A really, really bad idea and a complete waste of your time. You should be above this. This shouldn't be what you're doing. I should be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. You have a career in Hollywood. You write and direct, like, what are you doing? Why are you reading these comments that are clearly going to get to you? <laughs> Why would you do this to yourself and then say you're not bothered? Oh my god. All right, so it's got like 194,000 views now, right? Good grief. Um so so like this one guy says No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Austin Casey, you got it wrong. And this is more annoying. Austin says, um I bet I bet Eric is one of the type of people that says, "Excuse me, I didn't get my side of ranch." He's more annoying than that. He's the kind of person Oh. I bet you're not going to bring my ranch. Every time I come in here, they never bring the ranch. They never bring it. I don't know why. You order the wings and they never bring the ranch. It's so fucking annoying. The, 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 the waitress comes. Oh, hey, here's, um, who's, who's got the wings? Oh, me, thank you. The wings come. There's no ranch. See what, see what I mean? They haven't got the ranch. So instead of directing the complaint to the person who can bring the ranch, they pre-complain before the wings get there. The wings get there, they don't have the ranch, and they turn to you and complain instead of complaining to the person in front. Then the person in front leaves, and then they go, oh. then you have to get the person to come back. And then it takes them, and it, you almost have to pull teeth to get them to complain to the waitress because now they feel like, oh, now you put me on the spot. Bitch, you want the ranch? Ask the person who can get the ranch. That's the most annoying thing that he is. That kind of person. You pre-complain, then you complain, not getting a resolution. Then when the resolution, then when the girl takes three or four minutes longer, or let's say this, he complains about the ranch. The girl goes to the back. She comes back out and she puts food on another table. Then he's like, oh, where's my ranch? Because she didn't immediately come out and give him the ranch, he complains that the girl came out and served somebody else before. She better not dare serve two more people. Then he's going to put his arms up in the air. Like Yuri. Oh, where's my ranch? Bitch, wait. And if you don't want it, if you want it so quickly, stand up and go to the kitchen door and say, hey, excuse me, can I get some ranch, please, sir? Fuck. 
I hate guys. Honestly, I, there's nothing that I hate more than bitchy men. Men should be fucking leaders, stalwart, stoic, even killed. When you cry, you cry. When you laugh, you laugh. Not always crying, always laughing. That's maniacal and that's depressing. Sort it out. Middle, 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 middle. Go and rah, 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 rah. Fucking hell. Always crying and complaining. Shut up. Sorry. Sorry. Lo siento. Lo siento. Eric is notoriously thin skinned. He used to he used to stream on Twitch and basically anyone who wasn't kissing up to him constantly got perma banned. That sounds like a troll bitch who said some dumb shit and got banned. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> so that sounds like a hater. Whatever. I I still stream on Twitch. Eric Griffin Gaming, come check me out. Let's see. Did somebody now this is a funny one. I wonder if he put his angry eyes on when he was complaining to the lift. <laughs> That does laughs are never real. That's maniacal, man. This guy is deep down. There's a lot of rage there. By the way, be careful. If ever you bump into Eric Griffin, he might snap on the wrong day, and he might just blow everyone's head off. That that laugh was maniacal. That's funny. I gotta give that guy. I gotta give that guy a thumbs up. That that one's hilarious. <laughs> I gotta even comment. Ah. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> so that's a funny one right there you know just people make he thinks like because he's a comedian he says something's funny as if like it's an honor you're not fucking messy complimenting my fucking kick ups don't give a fuck you know what I'm saying like people that are having fun you know then of course you know there's like there's some you know like this is the one this guy's like calling this guy a comedian is a stretch it's like what <laughs> <laughs> I love how he puts the voice by the way the hater voice Ugh! all haters sound like chads to him Dude, did you hear Eric Griffin's new special? Oh my god, it's so like shit. It's so weird. And also, what is he? Is he like black? Is he like Taliban? Or is he like white? It's so weird. Every guy to him sounds like a Chad. Oh my god, dude. I was just at the fucking building on Jan 6. I was watching Eric Griffin and I'm like, who is this guy? He's fucking shit. He's a douche. All guys sound like that, yeah? All haters sound like that. All right, cool. I invite anyone to come to any of my shows out of town. I guarantee you, you will have a good time. No one's going to come, especially when you look like that. No one's going to come. I, you know, you know, more come jokes can be explained and later on, you know, whatever. But no one's going to come to your shows, especially when you're bitching and complaining about a five-year-old Lyft driver call, a, 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 a five-year-old incident where a Lyft driver called him into Potato Head in passing. <laughs> this doesn't fill me with um, excitement to come to your shows. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> not hilarious on this podcast because that's not what I do on here. Um, oh, really? You don't you don't try and make jokes on a podcast? You want to be serious? Well, okay, cool. Come come check me out. And I appreciate that there were some people in the comments of that that were like, uh, yeah, I've gone to see him many times. He's super funny. So it's just one of those things. It's like haters going to hate, right? Why don't, why, why don't you focus into that? If there are people in the comments saying, hey, this guy's actually funny, but there's people in the comments also saying you're a piece of shit and calling you a baby and a complaining the bitch, why not think, hey, let me try and rewrite the narrative on myself online. Let me focus in on the comedy and remind people that I'm actually good at my job. I'm actually funny. I'm hilarious. I'm worth the ticket price. I'm worth the effort. Why not do that? Why not think, hold on. I don't like how I'm being perceived. Let me change that. Is that possible? Um, you know, there's just so many of these, you know, um, honestly, worse Karen behavior because you expect Karen's to, to not have a sense of humor. Jokes are literally this guy's job. Ex that's a brilliant comment. That's a brilliant comment. That's a brilliant comment. It's actually worse than Karen behavior because he's a professional comedian. You should be able to take jokes or at least let the jokes bounce off of you. At least, if you can't take the joke, you should at least be able to glaze over them. Hey, you're not funny. And keep it moving. You don't have to laugh. You don't have to entertain it. You don't have to validate it. You could just move on. 
But to sit there and like, she called me Mr. Potato Hair. I didn't like it. So I tried to get her fired. And bit, bit, bit. Mm, shut up. I just want a driver to don't talk to me. I want an option where it says, don't talk. Again, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> if it was a joke, I would have laughed. Oh, shit. Sorry. Sorry, Andrew Ranger. I missed it. I missed it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Joke. It was just a weird interaction, but whatever. It wasn't a joke to you because you didn't find it funny, but they did attempt to try and make a joke. That's how jokes work. Someone says it, then you hope the person laughs. If they don't laugh, it wasn't a funny joke, but it wasn't an attempt at a joke. And there's all these people about, you know, going in about stuff. And there was one, uh, the reason why. Going in about stuff. I, I'm, I'm assuming the other comments are about Brendan and stuff. But he doesn't want to talk about that, does he? I, honestly, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I'm going to move on now and go T-Fat K. I don't think Eric is really that bad in general. It's not a crime to be a bitch. It's not a crime to be a bit of a limp-wristed man. And to be whiny and complaining. It's not a crime. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't like it. I think it's abhorrent. I think he should be, you know, I think he should lay down in front of a tank and get run over. But it's not a bad thing. You can be whoever you want to be. I honestly think Eric Griffin's major problem is that he's associated with Brendan and Chris D'Elia. I think the association with Brendan Shaw and Chris D'Elia is damaging him online so badly that people are taking such an innocent, not innocent, such a minor story and blowing it up because he's friends with Brendan and Chris. He just looks extra stinky, but he can't let them go because the check is good and the money's good, so he stays there. But you have to let those guys go, bro. If you want people to perceive you differently and to take you seriously or to not think you're a cunt or to not think you're a dickhead or to not think this or that, whatever, that association with Brendan and, and Chris D'Elia is ruining him. It's ruining him. I swear to God, I, I think that's the main thing. Because in general, if you think about it, really, my annoyance to a side, his petty Karen behavior to a side, it's not really that big of a deal. People just laughing at him more because he's fucking associated with Brendan and Chris D'Elia. A diddler and people who, you know, assume to be a bully and a douchebag. If he moves away from those two guys, similar to Theo Vaughn, and he stops complaining online, stops bitching and moaning, his career, even Bobby Lee, Bobby Lee who's known to complain, part of Bobby Lee's shtick and his act is complaining and being a bit of a baby. Even Bobby Lee used to complain about Eric Griffin whining. If Bobby Lee complains about your whining, you're probably whining a bit too much because he whines too. It's his brand. He whines, he complains. And he says, he, he can't even handle you. Oh. <sighs> big up, big up, big up, big up. I'm not saying that Eric is as popular as Seguro, but I would think he learned from Tom's airport meltdown. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But that's the thing, that's the thing you're not, I think that's the thing that we're not, we're not seeing here for these people. I don't think they see how, I don't think they know how they're perceived. I don't think they get it. They don't get how they're perceived. They don't understand. Like I said it before plenty of times here. I think that's one of the reasons why the Jakes and Logan Pauls and those type of people are so successful. They like understand why people don't like them. They don't change. Obviously they don't change, but they understand why people don't like them. They get it. They understand their perception. They understand that they come up, they're easy to hate. I think these comedians, for some reason, don't know why people won't like them. Like they have no they have no understanding of why they are annoying. They don't get it. It's like, bro, like, how do you not understand why you're annoying? You don't have to change. You don't have to acquiesce. You don't even have to acknowledge it. But you have to at least understand why somebody could see you for the first time, hear you speak, and think, "Cunt." You have to understand that because then you can lean into it. And make more money for it and become more successful, like the Paul brothers have done. They understand who they are and they troll against it. They don't change, they don't whatever, but they know how they're perceived. These guys have no perception. It's like it's like they see themselves completely different in the mirror. It's it's, it's almost it's almost amazing. 